as consumers we're being encouraged to expect things immediately when we demand something when we order something a day or two days and we expect it to be there and this expectancy in our material world can easily affect our spiritual lives we have to defend ourselves protect ourselves from this mentality especially when it comes to our problems in life and we pray to God and we look for an answer so often we find ourselves falling even unintentionally into telling God what to do it's very easy even unintentionally to pray with a certain expectation that God will act this way or that that God will respond in a certain time scale that God will respond because that's what we want but this of course is not true prayer prayer is about conforming our will to God it is about crying closer to the will of God this is why the saints prayers are fulfilled answered the way they are because the saints have conformed their mind their desires their will to the will of God we must be careful we must guard ourselves and it is useful to take an example an example in the lives of saints who show us and the way that God has acted in their lives shows us how we are to relate and what our expectation should be and the way we should look to ourselves and determine what it is we think we're doing when we pray when we look to God to answer our prayers this week we have remembered the Dormition of Saint Anna Saint Anna who was married to Joachim Saint Anna and Joachim Saint Anna who was the the mother of the Theotokos the grandmother of Christ Saint Anna who herself was the daughter of a priest a priest in the line of the Levites she was born in Bethlehem though she lived in Galilee and of course through her lineage we see both the kingship and the priestly nature of Christ's ministry coming together in Christ he's the fulfillment of everything that is kingly and priestly but Saint Anna and Saint Joachim had been married for 50 years and they were childless this we're told caused them great concern once in tradition we're told that Saint Joachim went to the temple to make his offering and the priest there turned him away considered him unworthy to make such an offering in God's holy temple because he was childless because their barren marriage as it was perceived was a curse from God if they were barren then God's blessing wasn't on them and he should not be permitted to make his offering in the temple and Joachim withdrew and spent time in solitude in prayer praying for a child longing for a child but of course after 50 years of marriage it would take a miracle just as it was in the life of Abraham and Sarah they prayed they gave their hearts to God they pleaded and after 50 years of marriage they were visited by the angel Gabriel who assured them that they would have a child in fact the child would be the mother of our Lord our Savior and in response they made a vow they vowed that they would give their child back to God of course when the Theotokos was three years old Joachim and Anna gave over presented the Theotokos to the temple to be raised fulfilling their promise to God two things we immediately learned from this of course the first is that God's will is not our will in that God works to his own time God's time is not our time for 50 years they were without child but they never lost hope the message there for all of us is when we pray when we seek God's fulfillment of our longings when we believe what we're praying for is of God's will then we are to be patient we are to trust we are to wait on God put our go our lives in God's hands and what did they do when their waiting when their hope was fulfilled they gave back to God the very thing which was so precious to them a child they gave it back to God in gratitude 
such was the blessing and grace in their lives, they gave back to God the thing that was most precious to them. All of us have something precious. Perhaps it's in our relationships, our material possessions, our, our status, something in our lives that we might want to cling to, to hold on to, to, to feel that is so dear to us we dare not risk losing it. The example of Joachim and Anna is that we are to withhold nothing from God. We are to return everything, offer everything that we are and everything that we have to God. This is how we pray to God, to give ourselves to Him. St. Joachim and Anna, Saint, they, they withheld nothing, nothing. The thing that was most precious to them, they gave it to God. And we see also that the will of God is not just momentary, it is not just to be understood in the time of our single lifespan. God was working out our salvation generations before Christ came into the world. In fact, we can go back to Adam and Eve. The wheels were in motion. Our salvation was already prophesied. God, his plan for our salvation was already in action, culminating in the coming of Christ, the establishment of his church, the coming of the Holy Spirit in our time, these recent 50 generations or so. So we are to understand that God's plan for our salvation, God's working of his, his will in our lives, is not simply to be understood in terms of the days, the weeks, the years of this generation, of this time span that we happen to be living on earth, but that God's will and his plan for us extends beyond anything that we can see, beyond anything that we could ever understand. He pours his grace and his blessing into our lives in so many unseen ways. We are to give thanks constantly for everything that God gives us. St. John of Kronstadt says, even sickness and disease, though we, we seek medical care and try to avoid it as best we can, when it comes, St. John of Kronstadt says, there isn't a single disease that doesn't somehow bring us a blessing. This to the world seems madness and yet through the eyes of God through our spiritual eyes through our understanding of spiritual discernment we begin to glimpse something of God's saving work his saving work that humbles us that strips us of reliance of our health and these things that we put so much store in God's will is working unseen constantly everywhere in our lives, the people we meet, the words that are spoken to us, the encounters, the, the events that we experience. If we could only look for God's blessing, look for God's will in all of the things of our lives, then we will begin to conform our own will to his. I should say one more thing about St. Anna, which is of course her conception of the Theotokos. It's important that we remember that in more recent times the Roman Catholic tradition invented this idea of the Immaculate Conception of the Theotokos, Mary, because of their belief that we all inherit the guilt in a legalistic way, as Blessed Augustine began to formulate, inherit a guilt from which we must be freed but of course the orthodox view is that it is not the guilt as such but the effects of sin a child a baby is not born guilty but a baby inherits the effects the impact of our our sin collectively a baby will die a baby will suffer and die eventually if not sooner of course but that baby is not personally guilty or responsible and yet the Roman Catholics invented this idea that we are guilty before God because of the, the sin of Adam. And so the Theotokos had to be born in their views without this guilt. And so they invented this idea of the Immaculate Conception, which of course would have to then apply to Anna and Joachim and 
their parents and so on going back but that's a different issue of course we believe that it is God's grace that purified the Theotokos the Theotokos was truly cleansed of sin in order to receive the incarnation Christ the second person of the Holy Trinity dwelling within her she needed to be purified to be made ready to receive him but she was conceived and born in a natural and normal way she was one of us exactly like one of us so then when we are frustrated when we lose patience when it seems at times that our prayers go unanswered let us remember the example of the saints let us remember how God's will is worked out in the lives of all of us in his time sometimes over generations and let us always try to conform our will to the will of God and to be patient and to trust in his love for us.